Look, I think we're about uh, on the last 60 seconds of coming into the room. So um, might as well say welcome, everybody. Yes, it's quite possible, Joe. I have got two rooms on, and that quite, is quite possible. Uh, today I'm just going to have a little quick chat about um, my role in broadband for seniors, and then I'm going to introduce you to uh, Keith Harvey, who's one of the tutors from Wood Rising Broadband for Seniors Kiosk and also a bit of a, a guru amongst the seniors within the country. So welcome, Keith. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, first of all, I'll just have a quick mention about what, 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 who I am. And my role is just as the Victorian networker for broadband for seniors. So I am the person that is the face-to-face -face contact of the different kiosks without, within the state. So what I might do is, um, this is not my show, this is Keith. So I'm going to bring Keith to the platform and let him take us through his journey. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Janita, and uh, welcome everybody to this uh, room. Hello, we've got uh, Orinoke uh, Westland. Um, for those people who haven't used Blackboard Collaborate before, and I'm not too sure whether Orinoke Westland has used uh, Blackboard Collaborate, uh, those are the basic controls for using uh, uh, Blackboard Collaborate. With the uh, the talk button for the microphone, you've got the chat system right down the bottom left corner. Hello, he says, greetings. I'm an old timer. Very good. We'll bypass that little one and get straight onto it. If people would like to drag a pin to where you are in the world, I appreciate knowing where you are. Um, so just uh, feel free to grab one of those pins and drag it onto the map as to where you are in the world. Okay, we've got somebody out in the middle of the ocean there with a smiley face by the look of it, uh, swimming away. Um, one over in Western Australia, very good. Um, yeah. Okay, so you just simply uh, grab hold of the pin and just drag it onto the map. So, uh, Warren Oaks in New York City. Okay, so that's roughly up there somewhere, I think. So, the people uh, around the world. So I don't know who is still swimming down to Antarctica, but uh, yep, yeah. let's see how we go there. Right, New York City. Okay, move on to the next slide. Now I'd like to drag uh, a pin to roughly where your age is, and another pin to the oldest person that you've taught to use a computer. And when I say the oldest person, you can grab one of the little animations from down the bottom, any of the animations. And just drag them along that slider as to where you where you want to uh, put it. So, got some uh, can't seem to drag the pin. Okay, on the tools on the uh, on the whiteboard, if you click on the topmost tool, so the, the little arrow, if you click on that tool, uh, then you should be able to drag stuff uh, around there. I don't know. Hello, we've got somebody who's taught a, a 90 year old. So we've got a few people there, and most of the people in this room are in the 50 to 60 bracket. Um, uh, and sadly, I'm getting from close to the 70 bracket, so yeah. OK. Let's uh, move on to the next one. So thank you for that. So we've got f we have some people that have tried to teach older people. So one of the problems with older people is you know, why the need to learn. Some of them say, oh, well, I never want to go to a computer again. Don't want everything to do with them. And others, uh, we've had come into the training and saying, well, I'm here for training, but I don't know why I need a computer. And we can usually manage to convince them fairly smartly um, that they do need a computer. And once they see what's on the internet and what they can do, next thing you know, they're rolling into the brand new internet. So some of the needs to learn is because of social isolation. As, uh, as seniors get older, um, they're less mobile, and getting out to see friends and contacts and stuff, the uh, computer can overcome that with uh, being a means of uh, keeping in contact. Naturally, transport is another thing. Um, as people get older, certainly in Australia, we uh, tend to lose our license and, um, and become a hazard on the roads, and even catching buses and so forth can be a bit of a headache uh, getting around too. Medical treatment and uh, finding out all the ailments and uh, what possibilities there are is another one. As is finance, um, because of uh, you know you can start to do online banking, and this does take a little while to overcome their fear of that. 
Um, my theory is I'd really like to take one person out from the media each week and shoot one in public to stop all the fear mongering that goes on at times about the dangers of the internet. If you take the, the right precautions, um, then you know doing finance is fine. Our games, uh, some of them like that because they are, they're able to get their, their mobility up and uh, doing stuff in that way. And increasingly all the information is on the World Wide Web. Government publications, business publications, everything is there for them. And family communication is another one, of course, keeping in touch with the grandkids and kids in these days when uh, people live all over the world. <coughs> and finally, of course, use it or lose it is the other reason. If they don't keep the old brain cells ticking away, then they're always uh, feared of the old dementia and Alzheimer's and stuff like that. But uh, you know, there's no guarantee that we'll stop it. But uh, you know, give it the best shot that you can. So in 2011, a Dr. Sandra Harker uh, did a study. Uh, she was in the Creative Workforce Program in, in Australia and did a study under the Australian Research Council. And uh, as to the barriers for older people wanting to learn uh, the internet, and uh, the big thing was that people were relying uh, on friends and family to use the internet for them or lack of knowledge about what the internet actually does. Most, um, most seniors um, are used to a light switch. They grew up in a generation where a switch on a wall just simply turned the light on and off. And they're having trouble coming to grips with the fact that things change on the screen. And one minute this spot on the screen will do that, and the next thing it'll do something else totally different. Uh, they're concerned about security and virus, and, uh, and confused generally by the whole technology. And uh, the number one reason is they don't know how to use the internet and lack of skills. So common learning issues that we've found with, with training seniors, one of the common ones that they start out is they, they fear that they will break it. They've just paid several hundred dollars for a computer and they're you know, scared that they will bust the whole thing. Uh, the cost of it, where we live, it's, uh, you know, in many areas of where I live, is lower socioeconomic. And, uh, and people uh, are buying a computer or connecting to the internet is a pretty major cost for some of them. So they are concerned about that. And terms and sales spiel uh, is another one. And um, you know, you can't really blame the computer industry because they've got so much new terminology to do there. But boy, oh boy, some of the sales spiel that goes on, they could really make it a lot easier to do it. Uh, hearing is another one, common learning issues there. Uh, with uh, how people uh, with their hearing and uh, in a classroom environment, sometimes that acts against them. Eyesight is another one that uh, that uh, is, a, is a handicap for them. The uh, you know we, we try and get people, particularly if they've got bifocal glasses, to consider buying just some of those cheap reading glasses. It makes it a lot easier for them to see stuff on the screen. Um, Dexterity of the fingers. As we get older, of course, we've got uh, mobility issues with our fingers and uh, arthritis and, uh, and stuff like that. So that's another common learning issue for people. And of course, memory. As we get older, it does take a bit more because one of our big battles for learning is not so much learning new stuff, but it's unlearning old stuff. And then a classic case of having to unlearn old stuff is um, the terms files and folders. If the person has grown up in a secretarial, clerical, office type environment, then to them the Mrs. Jones file is a collection of documents, photos, everything else about Mrs. Jones. Whereas on a computer, the term file is something totally different. I had a couple of people totally uh, thrown with that uh, until I suddenly realised actually my wife pointed it out. So. Uh, their working life, they may not have had much uh, uh, experience with computers, and uh, what experiences they, experiences they have had may have been quite negative, uh, either in the work environment with using the computer, or when the younger generation has tried to teach them how to use the computer, because the younger generation generally says, click here, click there, click somewhere else, and uh, you lose them on the very first click. So we set out and we decided, um, the other teacher and myself, she's a highly qualified TAFE teacher, we decided that we'd try uh, classroom training of seniors. And 
we quickly run into trouble. We're about half of the people in the classroom would get it, and half finished our classroom sessions more confused than when they started. And we tried every trick and technique that we could, and we couldn't uh, we couldn't master it. So the terminology is one that that, that uh, got them. Um, their hearing issues and noise was, was something else. Um, eyesight and a, and the dexterity again. Um, seeing is by and large are reluctant to ask questions, and it's something that you have to encourage them to do. Nobody wants to look stupid in the classroom, and uh, and it takes a fair bit of convincing uh, to get them in many times to ask questions. The usual thing I tell them that there's only one dumb question in this classroom, and that's the question that doesn't get asked. And uh, make sure that any time they ask a question, that you address it, and then all of a sudden you can start to get others asking questions. In the classroom, we had any of the slightest differences uh, between uh, what we were showing on the data projector and uh, what was on the computer in front of them. We tend to throw them, uh, just simply having icons out of place or a different staff memory staff menu uh, would throw them as well. Um, their memory, of course, short-term memory of retaining stuff uh, is, is an issue for them. And again, the negative experiences and the cost of classroom learning issues. We ran them uh, the classroom stuff on a real budget because of, of voluntary uh, teachers or government subsidised courses. But even so, for many, uh, it was a major problem if they had to go somewhere else for a, uh, for a course. It was well out of reach. And often the course was aimed at a younger generation rather than for the older ones. So what the government the government recognised this that, that it was an issue. Um, the, the older generation was having a, a great trouble with learning the computers, so they came out with this broadband for seniors scheme, and uh, they rolled out 2,000 kiosks around the place. Now each kiosk consists of two computers, two desks. Uh, with matching chairs and an internet connection for 2,000 locations around Australia. It was based on using volunteer tutors to uh, to help the people um, come to grips with the computers. And at one stage, they were virtually begging people to take these kiosks. They were having so much trouble getting them rolled out. They developed an interactive online training system uh, that is free for anyone in the world to to access and to uh, and to use. And the whole purpose was to just learn the basics of how to use a computer, get them up to the stage of being able to send an email, of browsing the internet, and doing very simple word processing uh, using WordPad on the computer. The stipulation was the cost has to be free. Uh, the, the internet access is, has to be free. And people are free to come in and use these kiosks at any time to look up the internet. Um, and it was open to over, the to over 50s. Uh, however, we don't bother to look at uh, birth certificates, so uh, anyone who wants to learn, basically, we will handle. So, since 2009, the, the statistics on the website, uh, about a quarter of a million senior Australians have been assisted to learn uh, the computer and get up to those basic skills. And uh, about 94,000 people have gone through and completed the online training system. Now, the online training system leaves a bit to be desired, and some people are a bit critical of it. But at our kiosk, we find it uh, very useful and a very good uh, way to get started. So to give you an idea of the supplied equipment that we had, uh, there were two Vista PCs. They were um, exactly what's in the picture. There was two of those. A webcam was provided with it, the desks and the chairs. And, uh, and lately, we're getting a new, brand new Windows 8 touchscreen PC rolled out to people. Uh, rolled out to the kiosks as well, and so that will give us uh, three computers in each uh, in each kiosk that we can train people with on this system. Now the Vista ones are uh, a bit getting a bit long in the tooth, but each kiosk, each uh, location now physically owns those computers, and so they're free to do what they like with them. So the question is, with a senior, how can we light their fire? Right, we can see what their needs are. We have the equipment to do it. But how can we light their fire? And it's like that cartoon uh, shows there. Quite often, the method of lighting their fire is right there in front of us. So we have to, first thing is to create a desire to know. And 
creating a desire to know what's seen is the easiest way to ask what their interests are. Is it gardening? Is it travel? Is it uh, just finding information? Um, in, anything at all. If you can find out what their interests are and then tap into those interests. Many seniors like travel and, uh, and they like to see what's going around. So that's an easy one. Um, seniors also like to use uh, uh, public transport, uh, particularly as you, know, as you get into your late 70s and 80s. Uh, car driving becomes a problem and certainly most of them will not go into the major cities. So uh, using the train and bus and ferry is really handy. And in, in Australia, we get uh, subsidised uh, public transport for seniors. So it's very attractive all, all around. So the more we can keep seniors off the road, the better. So, um, so train and, fest and bus and ferry trip planners is another useful one. Um, one that always gets their interest is Google Maps. Just ask them what their address is and go to Google Maps and suddenly, go, oh wow, the garbage bin throughout that day, I didn't even know that was there. And next thing you know, they're asking, oh, can we go and look at the, the sun's new place or you know, something else? And you can point out, well, if you're going away on a holiday, you can have a look and see what it's like before you get there. So it's another great way of doing it. The news and weather, of course, is uh, always a common topic. And out here, and, and I think in, other, in uh, other places in the world too, it's quite easy to see the uh, uh, weather radars and see what sort of storms and stuff are coming your way so that you can, uh, they can watch that sort of stuff as well. And the news, of course, uh, they like to keep on top of that. And then you can show them emails and the chat system and uh, that is always one that they want to learn is emails so they can keep in contact with friends uh, and family uh, as well. Um, you can Google for information and this comes back to asking what their interests are. And particularly if they're a gardener and you say, what sort of plants are you interested in? And you can Google for it and show them some photos of it and uh, they're, they're right into it straight away. Uh, Gumtree and eBay. Um, Gumtree is, uh, is virtually a notice board for uh, people to advertise selling stuff. And of course eBay, they're quite interested, although many new starters are reluctant to, uh, to have a go at eBay until such time as you explain it fully to them. But still, it's something else that you can attract them with. Uh, Skype, if you, can, if you have a friend on Skype uh, and you can phone them on Skype, they can see straight off how Skype works and the benefits of that. Uh, digital pictures with Picasa is another, is another one. If they've got an interest in photography and digital pictures, then Picasa is an easy to use, fun program uh, that they can see how they can manage their photos. Now somebody over here, uh, Janita, mentioned uh, Ancestry uh, is another one too, Ancestry.com. Uh, quite a lot of the older generation think, yeah, yeah, I'd like to record my family tree or find out more details about the family tree. So getting into the family uh, history, Liz Diamond mentioned the same thing. Okay, so tutoring techniques. If you're going to help a senior, some of the things that you need to do is you listen to their needs and their problems. So try and figure out, do they have arthritis issues? Do they wear glasses? Do they have sight problems or hearing problems? Quite often they'll tell you, you know, that yeah, I'm deaf as a post in the right ear, so sit on the left side of me to explain things. So you've got to be, you've got to be patient with them to find that information out. Um, and you've got to use your powers of observation to get that. You need to explain stuff in their terms and, and to be patient with them. For example, for the internet, I like to explain the internet as being the same as a library and web pages the same as books within that library and a browser the same as means of getting around this vast library and so on. So that you can link it from what they know to the new unknown and then they can get that pattern in their head that explains explains the, the two, right? So you do have to create this what I call a knowledge bridge that goes from what they already know to what they need to know in the new terms. Use the games that come with Windows for mouse practice. You'd be surprised the number of seniors that have never played solitaire or patience in their life. Maybe they grew up in a generation where cards were treated as evil or something, I don't know. But um, the, uh, the games are a handy way to get them to use the mouse practice. And 
that's another one too, with whether you use a mouse or a touchpad, or these days you've now got the touch screens. Um, but some of them come in that they've already learned how to use the touchpad. Now, if they have, then don't try and force them to learn the mouse because that means they've got to unlearn what they've already done and move across to the to the other one. On the other hand, do observe them if they're using the touchpad and they're having troubles with doing stuff. It could be because tapping is still set on on the touchpad and you might consider turning that off for them uh, to make it easier for them to use the touchpad. Uh, we like to use the online training system for, for the basics and get them to go through that and we're just now developing a system of uh, check sheets uh, for them after they complete each module on the online training that they uh, that they actually do like a little miniature quiz to make sure that they haven't just done a speed test going through the whole thing and have actually absorbed some of the information there. And that way they've got those notes to go away with the key things that they should have learnt from that uh, from that particular module. And to help the tutors who, um, you know, tutors are sometimes uh, well intentioned but not necessarily right up on the computer, uh, there's a matching uh, set of these um, uh, notes with, uh, with the answers. Um, so that helps the tutors as well. Now our kiosk decided to develop a competency list on what we consider the uh, uh, the core skills that we would like a senior to go away with. And so we give them that competency list and we say to them, look, just tick off what, what you know, what you're happy with. And if there's stuff on there that you think, well, I don't really know what this is on about, then that's great because it'll give, it a, give us a discussion point on, uh, on how to, to get them up to speed on that sort of stuff. Sometimes it's just simple misunderstanding of the words. Uh, other times they really haven't got a clue about that particular competency. Now, a lot of this material that I've mentioned, the online basics, the, uh, uh, the online training system and the competency and so forth, I'll put a link up shortly or somebody will put up a link to what's called our Broadband for Seniors uh, web page and also to our wiki uh, where we have a lot of the information there. Now, of course, with, with tutoring, it's important to show and explain but the critical thing is get them to do it. You know, quite often they're reluctant to have a go at doing it, but you really do have to be quite firm with them that they do have to do that stuff. And if they stuff up, it doesn't matter. You quite often learn more by making mistakes than you do by not making them. Encourage them to take notes or however, however they learn, uh, and particularly passwords. And it's worthwhile, I, I find it very good to, uh, to explain to them with passwords, to make a password that they can easily recreate rather than some bizarre password that uh, they could never remember in a million years. Um, but if they make it so they can recreate that password, it makes it a lot easier. And of course, humour. They might be silver on the top and dottery on their feet and so forth, but you have to remember that 30 or, 30 or 40 years earlier, um, they were just the same. They were you know, alive, vibrant, loved to laugh and all the rest of it the same. And they're no different now. Uh, they still love a laugh. And uh, so it, it is important to, to use humour with it. Never ever belittle uh, what they're doing or sling off at them and stuff. So, and do stress the practice and stress that they're finding it threatening and and uh, difficult because they're on a steep learning curve. I asked I asked people to think think back to the days when they first learned to drive a car or to ride a bike, and inevitably they shake their head and say, "Yes, yes, I was sitting there and Mum or Dad was over in the passenger seat screaming at me and wrecking the car." just let the clutch out slowly and push the accelerator down a little bit and they do and it does another kangaroo jump and, uh, and then, the, then all of a sudden they manage to master that skill and then you look back on it and you think why did I have so much trouble mastering that skill? It's because it was a little steep learning curve and learning to drive a car is the same as learning a computer. You can't do it out of a book, you've actually got to get in there and do it and you do have to stuff up and make, make uh, jumpy starts and so forth before all of a sudden you master it. 
Okay, you might like to also consider the computer itself and tune the computer for seniors. We, we encourage seniors to bring, if they have a laptop, to bring it in um, and then we can have a look at the laptop and sort out some of the issues for them. Sometimes they have trouble actually seeing the cursor on the screen, so you can change that cursor size, make it extra large so it stands out better for them. Uh, I've only ever found one, one uh, senior that liked those snail trails uh, business that you get with a cursor, but uh, when I went to turn it off, no, 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 she absolutely loved that. Uh, we had one senior that his eyesight was terribly poor and he couldn't see the, uh, the text insertion cursor. Now you can get into that and you can actually change the size of that. It's right down deep in the accessibility settings of uh, Windows, but you can and you can change the blink rate as well to make it easier for them to see. The font size uh, and clear type tuning is another one that you can tidy their computer up with a bit so that they can see stuff a bit clearer on the screen. As I mentioned before with the uh, touchpad, you can consider disabling tapping. Um, that seems to be a leading cause that people have trouble with the touchpad is because tapping is turned on. Once you get used to using the touchpad, tapping is brilliant. But initially, they may want to actually tapping turned on. The double click speed is another one on the mouse too. You can set that right down to minimum speed and the double click will still work fine even at high speed double clicking, so you can do that. The mouse speed is another one. Um, if, if it's uh, taking off far too quickly or too slowly, get in and adjust that. Icon sizes and of course screen resolution. You can play around with the settings there uh, to improve it for the seniors. You may find that they've got uh, an expensive laptop with quite a high resolution screen and the trouble is if you set it on the optimum settings everything is far too tiny for them. Okay, so now Joe has mentioned their tapping is also difficult for people who have arthritis. That is true. So there's some various workarounds for that sort of thing too that people aren't always aware of. And this is where the touchpad is useful, useful particularly for people who have shaky hands. Um, that they can move the cursor to where they want and then they can use the buttons on the touchpad or they can, with the mouse, they can select the item and then they can push the enter key on the keyboard and that, that combination does the same as a double tap. So there's little ways like that that you can get around to help them make it, uh, the computer experience more enjoyable for them. So how do we help the tutors um, on this uh, whole thing? And that's, um, we have an official uh, uh, BFS website and um, Sue at TAS Teachers put that up on the, on the chat uh, system there. And incidentally, you can save all of that, the entire chat system. Uh, we have a, a BFS newsletter that comes out uh, that informs people of what's going on. And we have regular Blackboard Collaborate webinars that are uh, orchestrated through Adult Learning Australia. Uh, Catherine. Uh, is normally uh, one of our regulars at, uh, or she is the person who organises all the Blackboard Collaborate webinars through Adult Learning Australia. And we find that sometimes we have 40 and 50 people in the room learning, uh, learning this stuff. So that, that makes for an interesting time. We have the BFS Wiki, and Janita has put that up on the uh, website too, just a couple of inches up there on the chat system. And um, the, uh, the Wiki uh, is a place that uh, all us tutors, as we find resources and so forth around, uh, we plonk them on the wiki for people to use. There's information that we that you, get, you tend to hang on hang on to. It is useless information, in my opinion. Um, the internet is there to be shared, and any resources and stuff. I fully encourage people to share it with others, uh, so you can get some ideas. We have a Google group where we share ideas and opinions. And, uh, and and that's a, another handy little way. And uh, quite often, you know, Australia is quite a large uh, country. It's nearly as wide as the US, or it is as wide as the US, and um, but but heaps less uh, population. So uh, you might have somebody over on the other side of Australia, Western Australia, suddenly ask a question: How do I do something like that? And you'll find people in the Google group. Um, that uh, sit on their computers that can quite a, uh, happily answer. Remember one lady asking a question and within 20 minutes she had two answers uh, from around Australia as to how she might overcome that particular issue. The whole broadband for seniors system um, 
uh, during part of it, they, they came out with uh, neck workers. And we have two of them there in the room today um, with Janita Lyon, who's the Victorian network. And I just don't know whether Sue is a um, neck worker as well, who, uh, who were there to try and get the kiosks uh, functioning quite well and to assist tutors and to, uh, to find stuff uh, out for them. And they're always available for any of the kiosks as a resource. Uh, to use. Of course, once you teach the seniors how to do do stuff like this, some of them become quite addicted to the whole thing, and um, and of course we haven't quite got got to that uh, area of, of shopping like that without a computer. But it would be nice to get to it where they can. So at this stage, uh, we've had uh, I've raced through this a bit on the quick side. Well, look at it. Even when I've got all over in half an hour, I'd worry it would take more than an hour. So uh, I'll open the forum to questions and suggestions and experiences. And if anybody's got any ugly excess cash, um, just let me know and uh, we'll handle that as well. So if you'd like to click the hand icon and if you want to talk, or just simply click on the talk button and start talking, and uh, we'll, we'll let you uh, let you into it. So has anybody got any questions at all? Um, we've put those links up, or any slides or stuff that you'd like to go back over. Don't be shy. Now's the time. Okay. If there's no questions, I might uh, I might take people to the actual wiki. And, uh, and uh, you can have a look there. We can see just what's there. Uh, do Australian seniors play uh, computer games? In terms of, uh, I don't know, too sure, Shambles, whether you're asking whether it's um, uh, uh, like online computer games or just standalone computer games. I'll just flick over to the uh, to the wiki to the, to the wiki. Uh, to go to a web tour. Now, I haven't heard of Clash of Clans, so uh, not too sure about that one. I just have to scroll across here to the right. This is the main uh, screen for for the wiki. If people can just give me a smiley face, that you can uh, that you can see that. If you can see that BFS. Thank you. Yep, a couple of smiley faces. You can see that. Thank you. The wiki is laid out in that we have these major sessions over here on the right hand side. So these are the major subgroups that you can go th go through to uh, that you can find stuff on. Um, uh, BFS General Resources is is a place that uh, any of the stuff that I have uh, developed, I've I've put on there. So uh, there's a lot of uh, information that's on there. So you would need to uh, scroll down on the uh, on the website to be able to uh, to, to see uh, to see stuff there. So there's handout sheets, um, you know, like typical Gmail screens and uh, and stuff there that you can use that you can uh, feel free to use and do whatever you want with. Um, we've started. I've started at our kiosk actually uh, running. Uh, some new um, classroom modules. Once we find we've got people through the broadband for seniors scheme, and we've, they, they're able to uh, know how to type, they're able to know how to find stuff on the internet, and, and able to send an email. And we find that a classroom environment, uh, they work in quite fine. So uh, uh, these are the the modules that we've uh, currently been developing for our kiosk. And uh, we're quite uh, quite keen to hear what other people have developed um, for, for doing for doing stuff there. Right. So uh, cyber safety is something that's dear to my heart, and uh, we hear some horror stories about how people have been scammed out of money. And uh, most seniors, um, you know, they're, they're uh, on a limited income, and it really breaks your heart when you hear that they've been scammed out of four hundred dollars. Uh, by some unscrupulous uh, so and so, and it's not just computers that they can get caught out on. 
they can get caught out uh, just on somebody knocking on the door and saying, uh, I can see you've got some loose tiles on your roof and we're tradesmen up here on the thing and we're happy to fix them, but we just need some money to go and buy the tiles. And of course, you never see it, never get to see them. The Australian government, fortunately, has put out a book, um, uh, the Little Black Book of Scams. And uh, if you're in Australia, you can, uh, you can happily order those. There's a link on the wiki to be able to go ahead and order 100 free copies of that Little Black Book of Scams delivered to your door. Uh, for those people who are overseas, there's a PDF version of that little uh, little black book as well. It's uh, it's quite a good book for uh, for doing that. Mr. Shambles mentioned scamming seniors who don't have money to spare is criminal and immoral. That, that is dead right. It, it certainly is. Um, and uh, in the classroom session I'm running up there at the moment, uh, one lady came in and uh, I was mentioning cyber safety. And to her credit, she uh, she uh, told us how she had just been ripped off for four hundred dollars uh, by one of those phone calls uh, with the viruses on her computer. Now, now most people are too shy to admit it, and boy, it really brought it home to everybody in the room that uh, that that sort of thing can strike right near you, and you do have to be careful uh, about that. So uh, yeah, I really took my hat off to that lady for sharing that experience with us because war stories uh, are one of your greatest training things. War stories and questions are one of the, you know, are the some of the greatest training aids that you can have when you're trying to teach for it. In terms of handling those phone calls from Microsoft, uh, um, telling you that you've got viruses on your computer, my uh, my daughter, who's a, a drama ex drama teacher. Her approach was when one of them rang up uh, in a breathless voice, she answered, oh, thank you so, so much. We've been sending out viruses for ages and didn't know that they were going out and then hang up. So um, you, you can try different stunts on these people, but uh, they're just out trying to uh, to make a quid for themselves. They're probably only being paid you know, 10 cents for every contact that they make. So. But it doesn't, uh, it doesn't escape the fact that uh, what they do is ripping people off. So, um, Okay, let's go back and have a look and see. You've got uh, a lot of other stuff in there. There's all iPad tutorials, for example. As we find links to, uh, uh, links to stuff, we put them up there on the wiki. Now, anyone in the world is... Um, uh, is 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 free to to go to that wiki and to uh, and to uh, grab whatever they want off it. Um, yeah, so uh, so please feel uh, feel free to do it. And uh, if you've got any thoughts on uh, stuff that you think might go on there, it would be great. Now another site that I haven't mentioned, another good site for for training material, is the GCF site, an American site from the Goodwill Foundation. Um, I'll just put the link up there for you now. Uh, they have some excellent um, uh, training material, uh, very well put together, and, uh, and good short videos on the topic uh, that go through to that. So I'll just, um, I'll just uh, see if we can't go to that site. Right, there's the uh, GCF uh, site. The, uh, the, thing, the, the part to go to is that one called All Topics. Um, and then you can see all the topics that the Goodwill Foundation offers. And uh, so you can go, uh, there's a lot of sites, and not necessarily all to do uh, with computer stuff. Right? So for example, here on the left-hand side of the screen, um, you know, we've got how to write cover letters and things. But if you then go to one of their links, right? Um, for example, all of their uh, uh, all of their training modules are laid out exactly the same way. Um, where you go to any one of their training modules, and they have here's links here that will take you through to interactive slide sets on each of those topics. Over on the right hand side are any videos that they have created. Uh, that relate to those things. And their videos are always uh, very well done, very short, and always to the point to explain some particular topic. 
So if you if we go to uh, sending email, for example, if we go to that um, particular lot of slides, you will find uh, that this slide set is uh, so you're on slide one of five, and so we can click through to our next slide. And if it relates to the video, or if there's a video that relates to this particular topic, you'll see that they reference it just there, where that you've got the video. Uh, now I've found that uh, all of their videos are also on YouTube, and uh, so I've downloaded them, possibly illegally, and um, and put them on USB sticks, and uh, put them either sell the USB stick at what it cost me five bucks, or, uh, or or install them on people's on people's computers so they can go home and watch them because you will find. Uh, that many seniors are on restricted type internet plans and uh, they can't necessarily afford to be watching it. And Australia's internet leaves a bit to be desired in many places where uh, you're trying to watch an online video and it's stuttering away um, just due to the, uh, to the speed of the internet. We are supposedly getting faster internet, but at the moment there's quite a squabble about how that's going to be rolled out. Um, you know, and so we look very enviously at some other countries uh, that have uh, quite fast internet. So um, yeah, so that, that's another way of helping seniors out, is to have those videos and, and shove them on a USB stick and install them on their computer. Now somebody there, Joe Hart, has put up you know, BBC stuff. Um, I haven't, uh, haven't had a look at that site, but uh, there's another resource uh, as well. So there's plenty of resources around for helping seniors, for training them, and for uh, for showing them uh, just what can be done. Now I'm starting to run out of voice, so um, surely somebody else would like to take the microphone and say a few words. Uh, please feel free to step in and take the mic. Okay. Um this is a good chance for me to check that my mic's working anyway. Oh yes, Sue, go right um, in. This is the first time I'd heard of um, broadband for seniors, and is it publicised in things like seniors' uh, newsletters and that sort of thing? Um, maybe it needs to be publicised in other places as well. Um, you know, especially maybe for those who are not quite in the 70s and 80s range, but in the 50s and 60s sort of area as well. Thanks. Great talk, Pete. Yeah, thanks, Sue. I, I don't know whether it has been uh, publicised in the seniors magazines. There's certainly been publicity done about it, but whether it it's obviously hasn't reached some of the uh, target people. Um, it's a matter of spreading the information around. Um, but it's, a, it's a poorly named um, system, broadband for seniors, uh, but that was decided well in early in the piece that it was going to be called that, and so the name is stuck. I really think it could have been called better, you know, uh, computers for oldies or computers for over 50s or something. Um, but then you start to think about it, you know, what does that really mean too? So I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a shame that it hasn't been publicised more. Yes, Janita? I think I agree with you about the name of Broadband for Seniors and one of the problems that I find when I'm on the road is that uh, seniors don't understand what broadband is. So therefore that's how they feel that it wasn't named correctly. Uh, that it could have been a computer, beginners computers for seniors, something would have been more appropriate. Um, I agree there. One of the things that I found that when you go into an individual kiosk and there's about, I think there's over 200 here in Victoria, and I've probably visited about uh, 40 or 50 of them, each place runs very differently. So the amount of advertising that goes on is within the organisation because they're actually delivered and they've run out of nursing homes. Uh, RSL clubs, uh, bowling clubs, uh, community centres, uh, TAFEs, uh, community colleges, they're all in very different places and they all have different purposes. Senior citizen clubs, they're, uh, so it's a very varied thing. So that's why the advertising itself is usually generally happens around that organisation where the, where the kiosk is. 
yes, I agree with, uh, with with advertising, and it is difficult getting the the word out to them. We've we've found word of mouth seems to be um, a good way of getting information out. But equally so, you still find seniors here, and they didn't have a clue that uh, we were providing computer training. So you've really got to work at it to tell people. Um, one place you can target, and they're usually quite appreciative of it, really, if you make up a flyer and take it into shops that sell computers. Uh, because inevitably they're, they're most interested in selling the computer. And uh, you know, once a couple or, or somebody buys a computer, one of the common questions is, where, where can I get some training on this? And uh, you know, if the computer shop knows, they're, they're, only over the, they're only too happy to hand out a you know, third of a page flyer to tell people, here, go and try this number and, uh, and get there. Libraries is another one um, that Janita mentioned. They quite often provide free training. And they're also quite happy to uh, to hand out flyers uh, mentioning where other training is going on. So whereabouts in uh, Tassie are you, Sue? Yeah, go ahead, Sue. I need to click the talk button. Oh, I've got, it, I've got to press the talk button. Sorry about that. Um, I taught at Sorrell School down near Hobart for 20 odd years and I've just retired. And I just looked at where the kiosks are near me and there's one in a nursing home and um, one in a local community centre. But um, I thought North 63 around Tassie, that's quite good. Yeah, this has been great, Keith. Really great chat. I've never heard of it, and I've learned a real lot. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Sue. Yep. If anyone wants to uh, to save that slide set that I had there, if you go up to the File menu and you come down to Save, uh, then you can say and, and select Whiteboard. Then you can save the slides. And um, the important thing is when you save the slides to save them as PDF type. Don't save them as a Whiteboard type. Save them as PDF. The other thing you can save is, is the chat system. It'll save as a text file, and uh, so you'll, you'll have any of the links and stuff that have been put in there, and any of the comments as well. So that's all, all quite saveable from this system. Uh, the NEC site, yep, we can certainly show that. Uh, NEC seniors. If you want to find out where to find a kiosk um, within the st your state or wherever, uh, one good place to go to is this uh, NEC website that we'll show you at the moment, and you can find your kiosk there by just typing in where there might be a kiosk. And you'd be surprised how many that you can find. Um, that's how I sort of, when I want to go and site visit, I'll go to a region and then find out how many kiosks are there, and then organise to go and visit those kiosks. But I usually find them through this under kiosk information, and then where it says find a kiosk. So that's how you find out what's going on. This website here, the Broadband for Seniors Helpline, uh, is, a, is where people go if they've got any problems. They can go straight to NSC who were the supplier of the computers. So that's why the association with NSC is there. See if we find anything. No chaos. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just finding some there in, uh, in Tasmania. Um, so you'd have to go through them and find it. As you mentioned, there's 63 uh, kiosks in Tasmania, and there's all the, uh, the contacts to find them. Let me just try that search again. No, I'm not going to find it. And the kiosks are always no. looking for volunteer um, volunteers to help. That's for sure, because they get quite busy. Some places I go to, they might have up to 15 volunteers, and they might have 100 people on their books, uh, the seniors that are wanting to use compute and learn how to use computers. Some places it will be staff that will just look after the needs of the, of the seniors. So in a nursing home, it might have a different structure. You may have family members that come in and volunteer their time to help their own family member get online. So the way that they run and the models that each organiser, each kiosk uses, can vary. So it's been quite a good experience, this one. 
Yes, every every kiosk runs uh, differently. Ours, for example, um, when I when I started up there, there were only the two kiosk computers. Uh, the manager of the centre uh, was quite happy with the way that we were going with uh, helping the community and so forth, and they dug into their into their finances and bought five extra laptops and desks to go on them, and have given us a little room. So we have uh, five seniors at a time because that's about as many as we can fit into the room, and we have three or four uh, tutors there to help them. And we train uh, just one day a week, and uh, each session of five seniors goes for an hour and a half. We find any more than an hour and a half, and they're, they're looking a bit stunned. So an hour and a half is, is fine. They can usually uh, tolerate that, and uh, and we get through it that way. So we've, we've got a chance to, to get through. And as I said earlier, once you've got them through the basics, um, then you can get through uh, into a classroom environment. Um, the classic story that, that happened to me was uh, when we were trying to teach people in the classroom was I got the class to go to google.com.au and one elderly chap who had been there religiously for a, for a few weeks uh, turned around to me and said, he said, mine's not working. So I went around and had a look and that is precisely what he had typed. G double O G L E D O T C O M D O T A U, simply because I'd never explained the dot meant full stop. Um, so it's unlearning and and learning the, tech, the the terminology is something that really brings them undone. I mean, as a teacher, I shouldn't have burst out laughing, but I couldn't help laughing at my own stupidity for not having explained what dot meant. You just make these assumptions, and uh, and this is one of the traps. Yes, Janita, go ahead. Uh, one of the things that really impresses me about our senior tutors, and what I find a lot and more and more, and more is you will have a, a tutor at a kiosk teaching someone that cannot even understand the same language, and they will find ways to get around to get that information to that person now. For an example, I had I went to a kiosk the other day where the only way that they could get the communication going was through soccer. And the fellow was so into soccer that they taught him how to use the computer without the language being necessary by using soccer as the way to venture through the computer. And now the fellow is using computer, his language is getting better of course, um, and things are going really well. So it's, there's good initiative amongst the tutors and that's what's really good because they're generally senior tutors that have either come from the education sector or from different sectors to do with computers and are ready to just share their knowledge and it's absolutely wonderful. They're a credit to the country. Yeah, thanks Janita. I'd, I'd echo the same comments. You don't need to be a geek or a computer expert or a top teacher to be a tutor. Uh, the critical thing is patience and exactly what, what Janita was mentioning there and Shambles mentioned too, the hook. You've got to be able to, to hook into what they already know and turn that knowledge over to explain the computer terminology. And uh, yeah, and, and sometimes, uh, in, in fact, uh, sometimes uh, you know, somebody that's really good at computers can be the worst possible tutor because they swan straight over stuff. Uh, if we think back, if anyone here is a, a computer uh, nuts like me, and you think back to when you first struck a copy and paste, and you know, when it first came out, I know what we did when we first saw copy and paste, we thought, what an airy fairy thing this is. And then once we learned it, we thought this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And now you just take it for granted that everyone knows what copy and paste is. No, my shambles just pointed out, techno babble. Okay, anyone else got any comments they'd like to make? Well, if, if, if nobody else got any comments or questions they'd like to ask about the Broadband for Senior Scheme, um, then thank you everyone for, uh, for uh, turning up for this and um, yeah, the whole system is recorded and uh, so they can always go back into that again. So uh, yeah, and uh, thank you very much.
And just can I just make a final, um, I can recommend that you go on into the site and have a look at some of the past recordings of the webinars. And remember that we're here, we're still having webinars. Um, we've got one on, I know that I'm doing one on the nights about iPads with Kat Matthews. So we've got, we still have webinars. We have them on a Friday, Australian time, 1 p.m. So please, you're all welcome to join us. And I know that many of you here do come in. So thanks very much all for coming and wonderful job, Keith. Really enjoyed it. Uh, you've got really good extensive knowledge and we all learned a lot. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye.